<laughs> Steve Webster with Paul Woodhead in the chair is on pole position going for his record-breaking eighth world crown. The lights go green and he makes a terrible start. Absolutely bogs the Olympia racing, Steinhausen racing, 1200 Suzuki down. Tries to make ground on the outside going into paddock to compensate and he may have got back through to third place or even second place. So Steve Webster cooks his goose off the start and Klaus Klaffenbock, the only man who could possibly take the championship from him with this final race in hand has got the lead so Klaus Klavenbach and Adolf Harney lead and Steve Webster Paul Woodhead in second place the two monster 1200 cc GSXR 1000 the GSXR 1100 cc bored out Suzuki engines pitch battle time at the front and the man who the only other man to win races this year twice a victor at Hockenheim and after a bit of fairing bashing at Assen, and that's uh, York Steinhausen third. And I've got it all wrong because it was Stevie Abbott. It's the uh, new paint job, Steve. Completely threw me. Steve Abbott in the newly painted Grevensek racing machine is the man at the front. So it's the veteran man from Riddings in Derbyshire with uh, Cheshire and Jamie Biggs in the chair. They are the guys at the front. And they did say they've got more speed out of that R1 Yamaha engine. And Rob Orm, it shows. Yeah, well, they have been developing that engine right the way through the season and is absolutely wringing it, the neck out of it to get the maximum performance and development and reliability. That's the thing, Jack. They have been able to put that all together. And, well, it was, it was a long time ago last year at Donington Park when they got the, the race win, wasn't it? It was, and they got, uh, they've got. they also had some pretty good results right here at Brands Hatch. Can they do it again? The Grevenset Racing Outfit has the lead. York Steinhausen is actually third and fourth place. We've got Klaus Klavenbock, the man who desperately needs to win. And behind him, we've got Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks still with his uh, stand-in passenger, Paul Simons, in the chair on the Hanks Racing Yamaha. And he, of course, just crowned British champion. So the British champ in fifth place at the moment ahead of Van Giels and the great Benny Janssen. Benny Janssen, his last race in World Sidecar Championship competition. The 42-year-old Dutchman will, is finally calling it a day at the end of this year. Oh, and as they come out of Surtees, the sheer power of Steinhausen's outfit takes him right the way through into the lead. York Steinhausen, the man who believes it's time for him to lead the Steinhausen Olympia recent team, rather than Steve Webster, because he's now learned the ropes in his third year of racing, has taken the lead. He's threatening his third victory of the year. There is a 13-point gap, incidentally, at the top of the table. 200 points for Webster and Woodhead, 187 for Klaffenbock and Harney. So Klaffenbock and Harney desperately need to win. There they are in fourth place, the perpetual runners-up. Are they going to be runners-up once again? They need to get past Webo, but they also need to get a couple of other guys in between Webo and themselves. If they were to take a 25-point victory, then they'd need Webster to be back at least in fourth place. It's asking a lot, Steve. Well, it's asking a lot, Rob, but anything can happen at this stage. Sorry, I'm getting you mixed up with Webber then, mate. I had you out there on the outfit. Well, I did have that run out as passenger in place of Paul Woodhead for a, a few tentative laps earlier on in the season at Darlington Park, but uh, Paul Woodhead, infinitely more handsome than I will ever be. But and also perhaps not suffering as much pain. He said after Osher Slaven, after that awful get-off he had at Assen, that let them never tell you that the adrenaline relieves the pain, because he said he was in a lot of discomfort at Osher Slaven. It did not go away. Well, he's certainly feeling more comfortable now, and he's just glancing over his right shoulder there to see where the threatening figure of the OKM machine of Klaus Klaffenbock is. And uh, this is as hotly contested a, a race as we've seen. We usually get hot competition involving a, a couple of outfits, but we've got four of them right in there now, although Stevie Abbott's just lost out to Steve Webster. Can't hold the sheer brute power of the 1200 Suzuki as they hurtle down there through Pilgrim's Drop. There is a, a, a slight weight, dis well, a slight weight advantage if, you, if your name's uh, uh, Steve, we Steve Webster. They've got the slightly heavy, heavier machine, but uh, Stevie have a slight weight advantage, and they 
put that to good use getting off the line and uh, sprinted away sharply but as soon as ever the the tire temperatures got up to to uh, the required amount by uh, the massive gsxr engines the 1200 suzuki 1200 outfits were able to pull away but uh, jack i'm looking very closely at the wily character uh, that just currently there in fourth place and it anything quite literally could happen klaus klavenbock and adolf arnie they seem to be just wanting to get things warmed up and closing in inexorably onto the back of steve webster and i just think back to earlier in the season when we were in australia philip island maybe just maybe there might be a payback situation there goes Clappy oh. looking for the inside I knew this thing was winding up to be a real epic showstopper, the finale to this 11-round series that uh, has been the Sidecar World Cup. Claffy's got it all to do, and Jack, I think he's going to do something somewhere <laughs> soon. <laughs> I think he is. Yes. He, owes, he owes them both one back. York Steinhausen, remember, collided brutally with him on the final lap at Assen to take that race win from him, and Steve Webster um, sidelined him in Australia and uh, hoofed Aldo Hardy clean out of the chair in Russia rather crude fashion to ensure that he got the race win on the final lap. So Claffy's come off second best to both those Steinhausen outfits in front of him, those silver streaks, and uh, he could just be, yep, in that silent, stern Austrian way, he could be out to eke revenge. And Brands Hatch, the confines of Brands Hatch, could be the place to do it. Through Druids, Hauzenberger, the second OKM outfit, not yet a strong enough runner to help out his... Uh, oh, and we've got someone off. And we've got someone disappeared, I think. Oh, they've turned over, going into Sterling's. Someone's turned the outfit over, going into Sterling's, and from that camera angle, we cannot see, of course, who it is, because so we can only see the unsigned. And uh, the... Uh, has to be a red flag situation, this. And uh, the red flag does indeed go out at Sterling's. Red flag out, and that's... Um, a curtailment of the, a very exciting sidecar race. Lap 9 out of 23 had been completed with Klaffenbach leading Webster, leading Abbott, Steinhausen fourth, Benny Janssen through to fifth place ahead of Tom Hanks, sixth, sixth Stuart Muldoon, seventh, Van Giel's eighth, Hautzenberger ninth, Hans, Hansen, that's uh, the French Hansen, Anson, tenth, the Steenbergens 11th. If anybody wants to help the Steenbergens, um, just to let you know that they've, uh, the boys have uh, lost their jobs and they're now unemployed because they took time off to go racing. No jobs, no monies, and no money, and no sponsors. So many anyone out there rooting for the sidecars and looking for a deserving crew to sponsor, please um, would you contact Paul and Rene Steenbergen, the Dutchman with their Suzuki outfit. And that was the outfit of. Chris and Peter Founds, the, the youngsters, oh dear, 27-year-old Chris Founds, the driver, 23-year-old Pete Founds in the chair, and uh, that doesn't look a very comfortable affair, so we've got um, a red flag here at Brands Hatch, we're getting used, we should be getting used to them of course, we had uh, a couple of red flags with the World Superbike races in August, and this time it's the sidecar's turn. The left hand side of our picture row two who's going to make the hot start this time webster was very slow in the first race and it looks as if he's slow again and already tom hanks has got past him and cut across the front and tried to get inside york steinhausen but look at webster's ability to make ground around the outside into paddock bend klaus klapperbock has the lead that's where he needs to be but that man york steinhausen looked intent on torpedoing off at druids but uh, doesn't quite make it tom hanks does hold out steve webster and uh, Klaffenbock, who's usually not the fastest of men in the opening couple of laps, needs to try and get his head down very, very early here to make the advantage count. Houtzenberger, even Houtzenberger in the second OKM machine, who is almost uh, within a couple of bikes lengths there of Stevie Webster as they hurtle towards Pilgrim's Drop. And down into it goes Klaffenbock and Harney in the lead. A clean start. But look at Steinhausen going for the inside. And Claffy left a barn door open for him there. Steinhausen said, thank you very much. I've learned how to deal with things like that from Steve Webster and my dad. And away he goes through. Webster through to third place ahead of Tom Hanks and Keith Simmons. Now Claffenbock, whatever else he has to do, 
Rob, I know it's difficult to break away in this standard of company and the, and the, the, the uh, speed that the front three or four are setting, but he needs to try and get away at the front if he's going to stand a chance of making Webster work for that championship. Well, there's just over 11 laps to go. Uh, I do believe that Steve Webster is trying to draw away, but that manoeuvre there, cleanly repassing Steve Webster, Klaus Laffenbach gone through, and with 11 laps to go, and that is Jörg Steinhausen. It's Steinhausen who's second, Steinhausen and Parts are a second, Webb all trailing in third place, and Claffy really needs to try and create the gap if he possibly can, but every time he seems to get a little bit of air between himself and uh, those mean-looking Steinhausen silver the bullets they somehow drag it back Tom Hanks is looking impressive it's this time it's uh, no, the number three outfit the Grebensek racing outfit of Stevie Abbott hasn't made such a brisk start although as I speak he cuts through inside Houtzenberger and nicks fourth place off the second OKM fifth place off the second OKM machine and uh, this is the uh, second lap of the second part of the final race of the World Sidecar Cup so everything to play for because the championship is still open and of course we'll have um, an excruciatingly difficult to comprehend aggregate combination of the two results to get an overall one race result like you said we'll have socks and shoes off in order to try and do that I'm particularly impressed by Tom, Tom Hanks and Paul Simons they really have uh, got their act together and started so well uh, they are trying to, to lock horns and do battle with these Suzuki outfits in first, second and third place they've got the machine set up very well it's handling well but not quite got the power to keep up with the leading trio and they're uh, Stevie Abbott, they're currently in one, two, three, four, fifth place, is looking menacing. The menacing silhouette of the Grevensek outfit, I think, will be lining up uh, for old Tom Hanks to give him the treatment at the end of the start finish straight. And pulling by the side, got the racing line, and on the stoppers into Paddock Hill Bend. Sure enough, there goes through Steve, uh, Steve Abbott. So Steve now has got to get that. Uh, Gremensek outfit with that slight power uh, to weight advantage uh, really really cooking now because in front of him we've got the 1200cc outfits and in third place at the moment Steve Abbott looking comfortable but the watching brief on current race leader Klaus Laffenbach, Steve Webster well the staring eyes will be peering through those glasses and visor <laughs> And at the moment we've got uh, Claverbox, Steinhausen, Webster and Abbott, Hanks. The first five in this race and on aggregate are the front five. Then after that it gets extremely confusing. But we get confused enough by what's happening at the front. So we'll just see what goes on with these guys as they cream it down into Dingle Dell. Back up the other side. Terrific amount of flame pumping its way out of the exhaust system of that 1200cc engine Suzuki. The OKM machine, the red one, the two silver ones in pursuit. Paul Woodhead moving comfortably and smoothly around that uh, sidecar tray. I don't know why it hasn't occurred to me before, but I should imagine the smoother your passenger moves, the, the less you're going to be shaken about and the more accurately you're going to be able to drive that outfit, Rob. Well, trust between you and your fellow competitors is one thing, but the infinite trust you have between you and your sidecar passenger is even more strong, even more reliable and even more needed because you get to develop a, a, a rider rapport and if you find it, your passenger isn't where you want him to be in a particular corner where you expect him to be then well you could see things as they got a little bit colourful remember back to Aston where sidecar passengers for our Paul Woodhead bouncing down the track bless him he had been he had been in a bath of oil for 10 laps hadn't he due to a leaking cylinder head gasket but uh, right now he's looking pretty comfortable he's keeping an eye on things behind him as if they they are aware of the fact that they don't want uh, the untoward happening behind them but right now they've rather got away from Stevie Abbott and Jamie Biggs and it doesn't look as if the Grebensek R1 Yamaha engine outfits quite got the steam yet to uh, to hang in with the monster Suzuki's at the front but of course those monster Suzuki's there were a twosome last year um, when uh, in fact of course Klaffenbach wasn't a monster Suzuki he went four stroke racing for the first time this year uh, Jorgi Steinhauser number eight the man who's in the middle of the three at the moment has certainly proved his credentials with his two race wins this year and has proved that uh, after Im dramatic and um, dramatic progress he's made as a driver two race wins this year he's certainly on a par with Webber and Claffy
Paul Woodhead, he couldn't get any further out of the uh, the racing side of that outfit. Look how far over he gets. Christian Parter, the uh, an elder statesman of sidecar passer, and isn't quite as uh, extreme in his antics there over the right-hand side of the bike. But Paul Woodhead, still a kid. Or be a kid with an extremely responsible job. I wonder if all his uh, all his uh, teammates at Volkswagen UK keep an eye on him when he's performing tricks like this. And think is that is that the same intelligent man that I work with from between Monday and Friday? Slowing down the race pace from the front. Are you saying that that could? Uh, how would that help him unless he could actually? somehow force Mr Webster off the track by doing it? Well, not by doing that directly, but certainly by slowing down the race pace so that we see that concertina effect and that is what we're looking at at the moment with uh, Steve Webster leaving Steve, Steve Abbott at the moment to cause a situation where there's temptation to try and pass perhaps where there's not a, a room or uh, on a corner where you wouldn't normally try and make a passing manoeuvre. In other words, indirectly to try and force uh, a rider error. Um, of course, as far as Klaus Lavenbach is concerned, for Steve Webster to try and force the master to try and make a mistake, which is a pretty tall order. And we're on lap 18 of 20, so Klaus Lavenbach on his... his uh, current pace isn't going to be doing any of that slowing down. Klaus Laffenbach wants to just clear off and win and maintain that four seconds lead that he's got at the moment. But really, unless he did something like that, uh, as far as a, a tactical, tactical manoeuvre, he can't possibly hope that to be uh, Steve Abbott catching up and Jörg Steinhausen to try and put the, the cat amongst the pigeons and push Webster back to fourth, because that in itself wouldn't make any difference. It would then take Tom Hanks, who is closing down dramatically on the back of but what we think, Jack, is the slowing Jörg Steinhausen uh, to try and get Steve Webster into that fifth place. That's uh, Klaus Lafenbach's only chance to try and take this championship. Stevie Abbott at the moment on aggregate is eight tenths of a second behind Steve Webster for that second place on the rostrum. And look at this, is he just giving it everything or what? But if he's got to get nine tenths back, he's got to get past him. It's the only way he's going to get closer than that. He's closed up so quickly and setting that blistering fastest lap. He's the only man yeah. lapping in the 130s, Rob, at the moment. That's right. With that uh, power-to-weight ratio advantage, uh, it's possible that we'll see... Uh, Steve Abbott has looked confident. The outfit itself, for me, Jack, has looked its most stable and competitive than it's done all year. We may well see Steve Abbott, not a great deal of love lost between the two Steves, uh, go for an inside uh, gap if Steve Webster leaves one, uh, up to the corner we're coming to at the moment, and that, of course, is Druids. But I don't think on this lap, well, it's the final enough. lap, that he's not close enough. If he stayed where he was and uh, he'd earned himself 16 points to add to the 55 he's already got, take him up to 71 points. And of course he's trying to overtake the Van Giels who are presently in ninth place. They would get 7 points to add to their 62. And um, that would be enough in fact to sweep the Gremensek racing outfit through to 7th place. And having missed the two opening rounds of the series, that's a pretty terrific performance. But it looks as if this man, Steve Webster, is going to add um, an unheralded before now eighth World Championship crown, well, certainly a World Cup crown, to the seven World Championships he already has. And that this poor guy, Klaus Klaffenbock, third in the World Championship in 1992, again in 93, again in 97, second in 98, 99 and looks like 2000. So that is indeed a very, very fine record indeed. A fine record for a nearly man. He's only 30 years old though, Klaus. 31 years old now, the man from Grieskirchen. He'll be back. And he takes the win here, the final round. He takes the win in the second half of the race and the first half and on Andregut. Stevie Webster holds on to second place and is World Cup champion, World Sidecar Cup winner. Stevie Abbott has to settle for third place. Couldn't quite do anything about that nine-tenths of a second gap. And there you see a subdued winner because Klaus Klaffenbach knows that in his heart of hearts, he's n failed once again to nail at that championship. Tom Hanks finishes in fifth place. Steinhausen hanging on in fourth place on aggregate. I beg your pardon, on aggregate, fourth place for Tom Hanks in that second 
part of the race. Steinhausen fifth, Hausenberger sixth, Benny Janssen seventh, Stuart Muldoon in eighth place. And that means that Stevie Abbott does indeed move through into seventh place in the championship. And I think on the overall, Janssen is in sixth place, which means that he can go out on a high, having retained fourth place in the championship. And Hausenberger finishes seventh ahead of Muldoon in eighth, which means that uh, Muldoon and Gusman lose that fifth place in the series. They can keep the same paintwork, they can keep the same number for next year, even if they're in a different bike, because thanks to the backing of Brian Buckle installations, they'll be uh, getting eight Yamaha R1 engines to learn to play with next year. That's the Clark Grand Prix team. This is the OKM Suzuki team. Uh, a despondent Klaus Klappenbach and Adolf Harney, but they knew they were up against it before the race and that it would take a, a minor miracle or some real problem for Stevie Webster to give them a chance at the real chance at the championship. I hope that the wonderful little smiling 45-year-old Swiss passenger doesn't retire now. 70 years racing, 17 different passengers and he's... Um, he is a fine co competitor and uh, I think he was feeling that if he were runner-ups for a third year in a row it would just be a bit too much for his uh, his ambitions to take. Anyway, Klaverbock Harney, we'll have a word with Adolf and see if we can persuade him to stick around. Further back, Muldoon Gusman in 8th, Van Giel's 9th, Anson and Nat Wood of Norwich in 10th place for France and the Steenbergens 11th. The Steenbergens, incidentally, uh, were the guys who were sort of responsible for the exit of poor Chris and Peter Founds because they sort of cut right across them going into Stirlings and uh, that shot the Founds out of control and caused the crash that red flagged this sidecar race. Now this fine set of people with their wonderful berets, they're the people who have been blasting out the national anthems and a wonderful job they've been making of it too. Here's um, a Steinhausen racing mascot <laughs> ready to welcome the boys home. And there's confirmation that Webo, with three wins, takes it over Klaffenbock with seven, 220 points to 212. Steinhausen in third place with those two fine, battling, outrageous wins of his. And Janssen nicks that fourth place. Houtzenberger, one point ahead of Stuart Muldoon. Bad luck to this Clark Grand Prix, boys. They can now focus on sorting out their R1 Yamahas for next year. Seventh place, Stevie Abbott. He nips past the Dutch Van Giels brothers. Tom Hanks, a tremendous ninth for him in his uh, debut season. Lechty, 51 points in 10th place. Ian Guy and Andy Peach, of course, weren't...